Today on the bench we have a, what the hell was this? <laughs> I don't even remember, what, 88? Yeah, 88, Galaxy 88, or DX88 HL. Get a little nylon scrub pads back in there. So you can see she's torn apart. Uh, customer sent this in to have some repairs done to it. Basically, demodify it, because yes, if it could be clipped and hacked and butchered and bypassed for AMC, ALC circuits, it had been disabled in that thing. So that's been put back. Um, he basically wants a good working radio. Um, he is a avid sideband person, so yeah, if you remove, especially if you remove the, uh, the limiter transistor at the right front on that board there, it was a Q39, I think it is, um, yeah, that just destroys sideband. You might as well, it's useless. You'll be so distorted, people don't know what the hell you're saying. So that's been all put back back the way it should be. Um, had a lot of bad solder joints. Um, and it wasn't so much bad solder joints. I mean, they may have failed, but whoever tried to fix it probably just made matters worse. Um, he said sometimes radio would work, sometimes it wasn't. Well, the center leg of the 8-volt uh, regulator, uh, the one that uh, resides right there, that little guy, right there, or, get it in the picture here, <laughs> right there, uh, yeah, the center leg was, it wasn't even soldered to the board anymore, it looks like they may have desoldered it to, which is what I do, when I'm doing bad solder joints, I remove all the old solder, apply some flux, and resolder it, it looks like somebody may have desoldered it, either that or it just blew all the solder off, because it wasn't connected anymore, it was actually, you could see where it had been arcing, <laughs> so it actually, the solder, connection may have broken and it was arcing and it did actually melted the solder and some of it fell off but uh so that's been fixed so the eight volt dc bus now is just fine in the radio uh last problem on this thing is the frequency counter so the frequency counter he said it was intermittent well i couldn't get the frequency counter to do anything so in these you have a display obviously in the front of the radio right there um, and you have a frequency counter module. That's actually what is used to generate, or, you know, to su supply to the display there. Um, these came in several different versions over the years. Um, this one's the EPT, what is it, 2114C. I think the D was the last version. Um, there was also an A version. Actually, I think there's three versions of the A board. There's a very, er a very early, an early, and a late production board. <laughs> Uh, they've redone these things numerous times over the years. Uh, now, I will tell you, if you have one of this version board, and when you turn your counter on, you get a horrible hum in your uh, in your receiver, it's actually a fairly easy modification to cure that. Um, doesn't require anything fancy or special other than basically a piece of wire. What you're going to do is, this capacitor right here, which actually they're going to be replaced, you see, because I've got this apart, it's got some problems. <laughs> and so no one ever has to basically work on this again. I'm going to remove these cheap caps, put some good Nichicons, and uh, actually one's Nichicon, the other one's what? Yeah, it's pan the other, the hundreds are Panasonics. Uh, put some good high quality caps in here, and then hopefully no one will ever have to come back into this thing. But uh, so. I got took the cover off of this, so this has the bottom half. The, the, the board is actually solder flipped around the right direction. They actually solder down in. There's some tabs around the outside. Well, actually, they missed. It's supposed to be soldered on these tabs here to here to this here to this corner here to this corner. Well, interestingly, it was only ever soldered one spot, right there. I've never seen one where they missed all the other corners. So, yeah, I'll have to make sure that's soldered, because you want really good ground. This thing is noisy as hell. It's a count. It's a display driver. They're just inherently noisy as hell. That's why this thing, one of the big reasons, it's in a shielded box. I'm trying to keep that hum out of your receiver. But, uh, easy way to cure it with this version board, because there's actually a problem here. It's the way the power is routed on this board. So, what you can do is uh, pull this leg of this capacitor. So... This side right here, pull it up off of the board, attach a wire to it, and route it over and solder it to the far left hand. When you're looking at the board in this orientation, you're going to pull the left hand lead of that capacitor up. It's no longer going to be attached to the board here. 
you're going to solder a wire to it. Put a piece of heat shrink tubing over it and then run the other end of that wire over to the far left hand lead on this voltage regulator. So this is a 7805. We get that in the camera or not. Get the reflection just right. But it's a 78, just a 7805 regulator. But you're going to solder that wire there. Okay, so just route it you know, over. I usually route them just about like that. So straight over, down, over to that lead. That'll eliminate a lot of that hum. It won't completely 100% cure it, because like I said, it's a display driver, they're noisy, but that actually does help to cut a lot of the noise out. But uh, interestingly, so when this is in the radio, it's mounted in this orientation. So I'm in here, I'm checking, there's a 13.8 volts is supplied to this. So your normal DC supply voltage is applied to this. That's why it has its own regulator. And then there's two pin. there's the far left-hand pin here is the ground, and then there's two other pins that get 8 volts applied to them, depending on if you're in upper or lower sideband. And then what that does is it sets the offset on the counter, so the, the display reads properly. I had all my voltages here. So, first thing I'm thinking, bad regulator. Or problems on the underside of the board, which we'll get to in a minute, which is what the problem is. So I come in here with my test lead, and you know, I check, and yep, I had like one point something volts at the output. So pretty much all of your 7800 series, voltage in on the left, voltage out on the right, ground in the middle. Um, so I checked here, and I had, like I say, one point something volts. At the input on the 7805, I had a couple volts. But it was, it was changing. And then I actually pushed down on it, because I'm holding this, flopping around in there. I kind of kind of held it and pushed down kind of hard on it. And then I happened to notice, well, hell, the display's on now. And I, I let go of it, and the display went off. Put the lead back on here, and if I pushed down on it, it would come on. So there's actually a common failure. It's not the regulator. Uh, the regulator is not, what's causing, not what is causing the problem. The problem is a surface mount resistor on the underside here. And it's undersized size-wise is the problem. So if we look on this board, you can see someone for starters has been working on this thing and they've got it all bodged up. Solder joints there, yeah, they, that's the capacitor which I'm going to replace them, but yeah, this capacitor here has the two leads. You can see somebody, they almost shorted out some of the pins on the, the processor right there, but yeah, they somebody's been tinkering with this thing. Um, the biggest problem I see, uh, or bodge that I see, is they've got a piece of wire across across here. That's not supposed to be a piece of wire. That's supposed to be a resistor. So one resistor is missing and has been replaced with a piece of wire. This is the culprit, though. This is a 40, I think it's 47, is it? Yeah, it's 47 ohm. So uh, if you're not familiar with surface mount resistors, the way the values are displayed on those, uh, unlike normal... Uh, axial lead uh, resistors like you're used to seeing in radios, they have color bands. They write, they stamp a number on these. So the first two digits, there's it's a three-digit code. So all of these have a three-digit code. It's just not focusing on this very well, is it? Not well at all. If I could get a little bit more light over here, maybe. Might help some. Probably not. Focus, focus, focus. Mm, a little bit better. <laughs> but in any case, there are three. There's a three-digit code. Um, the first two digits are the actual value, though, and then the third digit is how many zeros there are. So in the case of this one, it's four seven. I know it's I'm just not focusing on that. It's actually 470. That is not 470 ohms. So that means 47 with zero zeros. So there are no zeros. If there had been a 1 there, then it would be 470 because the 1 indicates 400, uh, 1 zero. So it would be 470. But anyhow, that little guy right there is a common failure in these. It overheats. And that's actually the problem. I know it's hard enough to see the damn part number on it you'll never see the bad solder connection but it's actually burned all it's burned right here it's a it's a bad connection this little critter gets really really hot all of the power that runs into this module well not 100 percent of it but everything that's controlled through that five volt regulator um runs through that series resistor right there so if we actually look at that on the schematic uh, which i have floating around here somewhere 
14 uh, C. So yes, this one. So here's our 7805 regulator. Here's the input, and if you follow down, you'll see there's a 47 ohm resistor. And if you continue to follow that down, off out of camera view, and you know, follow it down, you can see that comes over to the 13.8 volt supply. So everything that runs off of this 7805 runs through that little 47 ohm resistor. Uh, so it's common to see that thing burn up. I have seen on radios that are on a lot. Because it just it gets heat soaked, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Now, if you're only you could use it a lot, but if you're only using it in short durations, or if you use the radio and you don't have the counter turned on, you'll never have this problem. The only time this thing has power flowing through it is when the counter is actually turned on, because the power is turned off to this module when you turn your counter off. But here's an easy way to fix that problem, and that's just to install a larger resistor, and I don't mean a larger value. Uh, resistance wise I mean a higher wattage um, so it's not really designed for you know a larger package but we can actually get one tacked in there um, which is what I'll do um, and then the other thing is I need to get this piece of wire out actually that is this resistor right here that's missing is now a piece of wire so yeah they've jumpered across <laughs> this transistor that's effectively what they've done they removed that resistor, don't know if it burned up or not, but uh, yeah, they completely bypassed it. So, yeah, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. But yeah, I'll get that fixed, get the two caps replaced, and uh, we'll uh, see how this thing works. So let me uh, get those parts replaced really quick, and I'll show you what that looks like with the, like I say, we'll increase the wattage, because that's the problem. It just isn't, the resistance is fine. It just, it has to dissipate way too much heat. And the package size, it just can't handle it, and they, they cook. So let me get to work here, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, as you can see, I have the board hooked up. I have not soldered it back into the housing yet. And if we hit the power button for it, ta-da, it works. It's alive. Uh, now, so what I've done to it is fix that uh, basically burned-up 47-ohm resistor, I recapped it, because like I say, they're cheap caps. Um, all of the capacitors in this frequency counter module, the factory installed 16 volt capacitors. My honest opinion, that's just way too low of a voltage to be used in a mobile radio. I mean, you're stretching it even on a base station, because <laughs> um, the power supply, you can get slight spikes and surges, but for a, a radio that's going to be installed in a vehicle, yeah, 13.8 volts is way too close to 16 volts for, you know, my liking. So I installed uh, 25, actually it's 25 volt on the uh, 1000 microfarad, and I used 35 volts for the 200s. But those were replaced. You can see there's a yellow wire, the heat shrink tubing over it as well, goes over it just like I'd said. So from the input, or the 13.8 volt leg on that voltage regulator, so you disconnect... The tra and that's that's the main thing we want to do is actually disconnect the leak because that's actually where it hooks up to. It ends up this capacitor attached there. The problem is is the way it's routed on the other side. Remember this is a, a double sided board with uh, through plated holes, and it passes back and forth a few times through the board, and they ran it past some really noisy places, and it acts like an antenna on the other side. So by Running it with a wire just on this side alone, that's where it, it, it helps to prevent it from picking up a lot of that hum. Because on this side, it's mainly a lot of ground plane. So it's acting as a shield for that, that wire. But uh, Now, I had said, and I couldn't, I wasn't 100% sure. Actually, I looked at that schematic again. Remember, I had said there was a resistor here. Someone had jumpered across. Actually, that's supposed to be a jumper. It, well, it's not supposed to be a jumper wire. It's supposed to be what I installed which is a zero-ohm resistor. So it's actually not a resistor, but it's a zero-ohm jumper. So that that's what's actually supposed to be on there. If you look at the bomb or the bill of materials, that's actually what they call for for that resistor. Uh, now, one thing when you install this for... And, yeah, I just can't get it to focus on that. Let me try my other... Mm, yeah, that helped a little bit. A little bit more light. But this resistor... Usually, if you've had this problem where that resistor's burned up, the trace on this bottom side here, at least in the picture, the way you're looking at it, 
it's just a pad and there's a through. So one of these little, you see these little tiny holes. So there's a plated through track there and it just has the pad just for this side of that resistor. That will usually be burned up, which is exactly what was on here. When I pulled that resistor off, the pad just came with it because it was completely baked off of the circuit board. So what I do is, is just remove a little bit of the solder mask off the trace on this side. Take a, you know, a used a component, just take a piece of circuit lead. But what you want to do is, is because you can get a piece of circuit lead, will pass right through those vias. Okay, so you can pass a piece of, you know, cut off lead through that hole scrape a little bit of the masking off, you know, burnish it, and then you can bend it over, solder it down to the trace on this side, let it stick up on this side so it's actually sticking up past the top of the resistor just a little bit. It actually makes a convenient little bump stop so when you set the resistor down on the board, you just slide it up to that wire, and then you just solder it on. And then, actually, make sure you put a good size blob of solder like I have here, and then also continue a big blob of solder actually up to the lead for the voltage regulator like I have here. So you see I got a really I really got the solder piled up. I'm usually against having gigantic mounds of solder, but in this case, because this part does get really hot, now originally this had an 080 uh, 0805 sized uh, resistor in here. I've installed a 1206 package, so it's already it's bigger, so it can dissipate more heat. But by uh, adding all of this solder, excuse me, over to this lead on the voltage regulator, some of that heat can actually get transferred up here through to this side, so it actually helps to sink a little bit more heat away through the board to the blob of solder on this side, and through this blob of solder, and then up through the leg, which is, of course, floating in the air on the other side. So it, it just helps to dissipate some of that heat and prevent that again. So, you know, I can actually set my finger on there. It's hot. Don't get me wrong. It's actually starting to almost get to the point of painful, but if that had been uh, an original 0805 sized resistor with without all of this solder on there, trust me, that thing gets hot enough you cannot hold your finger on it. I mean, they're just, they get it's just ridiculously blazing hot, <laughs> which was actually one of the things uh, that they upgraded. Yeah, they like I said, they went through a lot of revisions of these frequency counterboards, and like this capacitor, this bodge here, the resistor on the other side there, actually this inductor, which this is actually looks like it has been replaced at one point in time. There are common failure points; they'll burn up. Most of those were fixed in the last or the, or the latest revision of this board, which I, th I think it's they're up to the D model. I don't think they've uh, gotten to the E or F boards yet. But uh, so there you go. There's just a really quick repair. So if you have one of these frequency counters, it's dead. First thing to do: take your voltmeter. On one side, you should see your line voltage. You know, for the radio, 13.8 volts or you know thereabouts, and then the lead on the opposite side of it should have 5 volts. The center lead won't have anything because that's ground. If you either don't have the 13.8 or your 5 volts is missing, you know if you have 13.8 volts there and you don't have 5 volts on the other side, you either lost the ground or the regulator's bad. If you're missing your 13.8 volts, 13 .8 volts at the regulator, but you have it at the green wire right here, because that's actually where the 13.8 volts comes in from the radio chassis, it comes in on that green wire, if you've got 13.8 volts there and nothing at the the input to the voltage regulator, then you can pretty much be guaranteed that 47 ohm resistor's burned up, and most likely it's probably damaged the circuit trace. But like I say, there's a via right there. It's very easy just to pass a piece of lead through that um, and do a quick repair on it. And that that's usually all it does to all you need to bring them back to life. And like I say, I recommend replacing the caps while you're in there. They're just the voltage ratings are just too low in my opinion, and it does get rather warm because it's in a sealed box. So you know, do them now rather than later. You've already got the board out, you know, servicing it. There's no better time to do it than now. So hope that helps somebody out.